Shalom. My question is in regards to the words of Yeshua concerning the adulterous woman in John chapter 8. When they brought this woman who was caught in the act, Yeshua said, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Many today are using these words to say that we are not to judge anyone's sins. Is this what Yeshua meant by these words? I'm eager to hear your answer. It is true that many today are using the words of Jesus in John chapter 8 to lessen the gravity of sin and even to promote their own sins. The idea behind this is that since we are all sinners, we are now free from condemnation. And so let's use that as a permission to go on sinning. And today, this saying to throw the first stone has come to point out that first person who criticized someone or something. But this is so far from what Yeshua meant when he pronounced these words. To find the meaning behind this saying, we are to look at the law of adultery in the Bible. This is what was raised by the scribes and Pharisees when they said in verse 5, Now in the law of Moses, and commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? They asked Jesus. Let us then go and see what the law of Moses says, and from there we will understand Yeshua's statement. It is often a question of context. What the law prescribes is that if someone witnesses a sin deserving the death penalty, this one should be the one to throw the first stone. This law is found in Deuteronomy chapter 17 verses 6 and 7. This is what it says. Whoever is deserving of death shall be put to death on the testimony of two or three witnesses. He shall not be put on the testimony of one witness. And see what he says in verse 7. The hands of the witnesses shall be the first against him to put him to death. And afterwards the hands of all the people. But the problem in John chapter 8 is that these witnesses were nowhere to be found. And worse, they let the men go and only brought the woman to Jesus. It is to these witnesses that, we, that he pronounces these words. He who is without sin among you, that is, in other words, those among you who are doing what is according to the law and have therefore witnessed this event, let them throw the first stone. So technically, according to the Mosaic law, these witnesses who did not show up at this makeshift trial are the first sinners in this case. And so Jesus is asking the scribes and Pharisees, where are your two witnesses? Where are those who are ironically without sin when they are needed to enforce the judgment? But by saying these things, Yeshua does not in any way lessen the gravity of sin and cannot be used to promote or defend one's sin. Every sin, as David understood in his chapter of the confession of sin, that is in Psalm 51, every sin is against God and needs to be paid for. The religious leaders tried to bring Yeshua in doing something against the law, both laws, the Mosaic law and the Roman law, but this stood not a chance. However, there is something in this saying which speaks directly to all people and to all believers as well. We, 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 we can even see an invitation to salvation here. It is possible that this woman was not married but betrothed, that is engaged. Okay. At the time, an engagement was as valid as a marriage and required divorce papers to annul it. The reason why she may have been only betrothed is because according to Deuteronomy 22 verse 21, the stoning was for an unfaithful bride, not a wife. When it came to a married woman, the Bible only says to put both the man and the woman to death. And the Jewish oral law prevalent at that time, at the time of Jesus, decided that the death penalty should be by strangling. So the fact that they ask for stoning indicates that they knew she was engaged to someone else but not yet married. Now why is this important to know that the woman was betrothed and not married? First, today the body of the Messiah, the church, is at this present time betrothed and not yet married to Yeshua. This we understand, for instance, from 2 Corinthians 11, 2, speaking to all believers today, we read that, For I betrothed you to one husband, so that, uh, so that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin. 
This woman then in John chapter 8 is a type of all believers who sin and are brought to God for judgment. However, who stands in front of the throne of God? Yeshua, our lawyer, our redeemer, who, who took on every one of our sins when he was on the top on the cross and secondly for those who are not believers and were caught in sin and brought for judgment these first meet the Messiah Yeshua who has the power to judge and to condemn but at his first coming he was there and still is here with an offer for salvation as a groom to come to seek his future wife his last words to the woman are also for us I do not condemn you, he says, neither uh, either, that is. Go from now on, sin no more. That is for now, for he is coming as a judge later on. By these words, he did not encourage sin, but we can see an offer for salvation. And for us believers, when we sin, he does not condemn us because he died for us. And so he tells us all, for now on, sin no more. And then you may say, but it is impossible not to sin. This is when John says, my little children, this is in 1 John 2, 1, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua Mashiach the Tzaddik. The believers in the scriptures it is seen as one who is constantly growing in the Lord. That is called sanctification. And, and the word sanctified means separated. Separated from what is sin. So as we grow spiritually, sin will have less and less of a hold in our lives.